Okay, so I was just about to take a shower, and I opened my bedroom door <laughs> to see my dog sitting on my desk. I'm not sure what he's doing there. I think he's looking out the window. Hey, buddy. Whoop. How you doing? I don't think you should be up there. Please come down. So last night I got an anonymous message on Tumblr about how me talking about my eating disorder helped this person realize that they had the same disorder, which I thought was really neat that I was able to help someone like that. So I thought that today I would talk more in depth about my disorder so I could like educate people if they haven't heard of it or if they have it, they might find out that they have it. So I have avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, which is shortened to ARFID and it's an eating disorder, but it differs from other disorders like anorexia and bulimia and that it's not linked to body image at all. Everyone who has ARFID experiences it differently. Some people are really sensitive to textures and colors. Some people don't have an appetite. Some people eat really slowly or in really small portions, etc. My disorder is linked to texture and flavor, um, and it manifests as this really intense phobia of food. So basically, if you put something in front of me that's not really mild, like bread or cheese, I cannot eat it. Like, I don't even register it as something edible. If I try to eat it, I will gag, and it'll just be a really horrible and embarrassing experience for everyone. No one really knows what causes it. Uh, for me, it flipped on like a switch when I was two years old. I ate a lot of foods like a normal baby and then one day I literally woke up hating everything. Like my mom tried to ooh, interrupt me. Why don't you notifications? My mom tried to feed me mashed potatoes, which I'd eaten before, but that day I just completely refused them and to this day I hate mashed potatoes. Like I just stopped eating things. The sudden onset of it is apparently a common experience among people with ARFID, but uh, absolutely no one knew what was wrong with me. Everyone just thought I was a freak or a picky eater. I only ate things like bread and peanut butter and everything else I gagged on or just flat out wouldn't even try. I was so desperate not to eat things that I would sneak them into the trash. Like one time before I liked grilled cheese sandwiches, my mom was trying to convince me to like grilled cheese sandwiches. One time I tried to throw them out by putting them in the trash can, but my mom figured it out. Like she went through the trash and I got punished for it. So the next time she made me eat something, I waited until no one was around. I walked outside in the snow into a neighbor's yard and dropped my food in their trash can outside so that no one would know that I'd thrown my food away because I was just not gonna eat it. I think the point at which my mom gave up on helping me herself was when, I, I forget what food this is, but she was trying to force me to eat it and she was like, you're not gonna eat anything else until you finish this meal. And I just looked at her in the eyes, just little kid me, and I said, I guess I'll just starve then. And I was completely serious. I would 100% starve myself to death. So she cried about that. And I can imagine that would be pretty awful to experience. I kind of feel bad. My disorder caused a lot of problems for me at school and at daycare. Um, I would just completely avoid social functions where there was food. It was just a complete nightmare to explain to people why I wasn't eating things. And I would like make up fake allergies so that people would stop asking me about it. Um, at daycare, I would bring my own food. Um, and one time they told me that I wasn't allowed to eat the sugar cookies I brought anymore because someone there had a peanut allergy and they said that because my cookies were made in the same factory as where there were like peanuts or something, I wasn't allowed to have them anymore. And I basically raised hell over that because I wouldn't eat anything else. When I went to sixth grade camp, I brought a cooler of my own food. Like I would bring toaster waffles for breakfast and everyone stared at me and it was really horrible and everyone thought I was a freak and I just said it was because of my life ending allergies so I wouldn't have to explain why I was the only person who brought their own food for a week at camp. My entire childhood was therapy. Um, one of the first therapists I saw diagnosed me with a feeding disorder, which um, is what ARFIG was classified as before the DSM-5 came out. I haven't been back to a therapist since it was reclassified as ARFID, but I was diagnosed with a feeding disorder, which is the same thing. My therapist linked my eating disorder to my sensory integration disorder, which is basically when sensory input is really intense for you. Like, uh, I used to not be able to wear most socks because they would bother me. I had to cut all of the tags off of my clothes because I just could not stand the stimulation of being touched by them. So my sensitivity to things was linked to my sensitivity to different kinds of foods. Everything was broken down into tiny steps. Um, I learned how to take medication because she would cut pills in half for 
for me and helped me learn how to swallow pills. I learned how to eat pizza because like every single session we'd try a different part of pizza. Like I'm not even kidding, I used to hate pizza and I had to go to therapy to learn how to eat pizza. When I was in seventh grade, we found this clinic that exclusively worked with people who had eating disorders and they mainly worked with people who had like anorexia and bulimia, binging and purging, etc. We decided it might be helpful for me to go to a place cause, like that because they were still specialized in eating disorders. So, you know, I spent three weeks in outpatient there, which means I had to leave school for three weeks. They faxed my homework to me and I would spend from morning to night just in the clinic working on food and going to like group therapy sessions and talking one-on-one -on -one with a therapist and just doing all that mental illness institutional stuff. My diet was really really strictly regimented like it was written out for the entire week what I was allowed to eat, how many calories were in each of those foods. Because what they were trying to do at this point, um, I was so undernourished that my body was actually behind in development like I was very small, I was not getting my period, so they were focused on trying to beef me up a little bit because I was underweight. So they succeeded in doing that, but it was really emotionally hard on me because I- <laughs> they made you eat literally every crumb of what they gave you. Like when I was allowed to eat waffles, they had me lick the syrup off of my plate to make sure that I had all of the calories that they'd written on my sheet. I was always the last person to finish my food by like a half an hour to two hours. Like I would just sit there and stare at it and they would make me sit there and stare at it until something happened and I would just pray that they would let me throw out my food. One time they tried to make me drink soda and I sat there and until it went flat because I refused to drink soda. I still don't drink soda, I just don't like it. I wasn't allowed to use the internet for more than like small chunks of time only once a day. I wasn't allowed to draw in my notebook while people were talking, which was hard because I doodle when everyone is talking. That's just how I like process stuff, I draw. That was a really horrible experience and it introduced some things into my diet, but it ultimately didn't do that much for me because it was structured for people who, <laughs> there's a very real difference between not eating food because it's linked to your image of yourself and not eating food because you don't see the food as something you like literally can ingest. Everyone in the whole world could think this was the best food they'd ever eaten and I'd try it and I'd be like, that was really gross, I never want that again. My mom eventually had a barium swallow study done on me, which is a test where they try to find out if you have any physical difficulties with swallowing things or your stomach or whatever. And they didn't find anything physically wrong with me. And that didn't really help either because it gave people like proof that it was all in my head and I just needed to get over it and eat things like a normal person instead of being too picky. Food is central to every part of life, almost. And if you have a problem with food, you have a problem with everything. Eventually we gave up on all of this because we were just raking in those medical bills and we were just amassing a lot of medical debt for treatments that weren't actually working. In high school, my diet mainly consisted of peanut butter sandwiches, grilled cheese sandwiches, macaroni and cheese, various crackers like Cheez-Its and Triscuits. I could eat McDonald's cheeseburgers as long as it didn't have literally anything else on it except for the cheese and the meat and the bun. I liked McDonald's food a lot because it didn't like it didn't taste like real food kind of like I wasn't able to eat normal burgers because the flavor was like really there but McDonald's is like way more muted. Everyone tries to scare me by saying like, ooh, McDonald's isn't real food, and I'm like, yeah, I know, that's why I eat it. This is not a cheerful video, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to like these are the factual experiences that I've had in my life and these are the kinds of difficulties that arise from having an eating disorder. I wish I had an inspirational recovery story, but I don't. I still avoid social events a lot if there's gonna be food. I'll either bring my own food or I'll ask to leave to get different food or I'll just like hard avoid it, like just dodge it completely. I'm terrified of going on trips or studying abroad because if the food is something that I don't eat then I'll just like starve all the time and I won't make a big deal out of it because I don't want to cause a scene and I don't want people to pity me so I'll just be like oh I'm not hungry and I'll just deal with it and it sucks. This past year there have been two main developments with my eating disorder. The first being that school has really stressed me out. Not just school, just like life events. The extreme stress combined with my eating disorder is just making me incredibly physically and mentally weak. So I've started seeking out sources of nutrition that would be easy first steps for me. Like I tried drinking orange juice. I've also started drinking smoothies with other fruits in them because that way I get the nutrients that are in the fruits without having to like 
deal with the texture of actually eating fruits. Eventually, I hope that maybe I can move on to vegetable smoothies, but I don't know. Vegetables and I have never been friends. The second thing is, um, this might not seem linked to me getting better, but I've actually started treating my disorder as a legitimate disability. Like, previously, I'd just been completely brushing it off as me just having my own personal problem and oh, I don't want anyone else to deal with my problem, I'll just quietly handle it over here by myself. But sometimes I'll be at a social function and I'll feel brave enough to tell the person in charge of the food like, hey, I have this eating restriction, I need these accommodations, I need some sort of like mild food option. And part of me struggles with that because I feel like I'm enabling myself, but I also know that this is a very very long journey that I'm going to struggle with for my entire life and to just constantly subject myself. I'm not gonna get better just because my only option of things to eat at this function is a salad. Like, it's gonna take a long time of me trying different components of the salad separately by myself when I'm not in public, and so it makes sense for me to ask people for help because I'm not better yet and I won't be for a long time. A lot of people have tried to give me tough love and that doesn't work, that just makes me completely shut down and sometimes I relapse, which is bad. I see much more success when I myself take the initiative to try something and yeah, that might take a long time, but like ultimately it works better if I'm setting my own schedule. I'm not a weak person for having this, it's an illness and if you have this, then it's not your fault. My advice would be that you know yourself better than anyone else and if someone's telling you that you're not getting better fast enough that they can go deal with their problems themselves. This is your problem and you get to decide how you want to deal with it. I promise you're not the only person who has this. Uh, one thing that was comforting to me, I kind of like cried when I found out, but there is an ARFID tag on Tumblr. There's a community of people with relatable memes who all get how horrible Thanksgiving is. All right, so closing thoughts. There are a lot of success stories out there. I'm not one of them yet. I honestly don't know if I ever will be because I'm not one of those endless positivity people. Like. I don't know, but I'm trying and I've lived with this my whole life and I'm sure that I can deal with it in the future. I'm not really sure what else to say about it, but if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments and if you have an experience with this eating disorder or you know anyone else with this eating disorder, you can let me know down below. Um, and I'll put some links to some ARFID blogs in the description as well. So uh, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow.